head. <laughs> All right, guys. It's your lab coats, lab coat agents here again for uh, part uh, for our third lab coat TV episode. Uh, today I have Tristan. Where are you, What's Tristan? Up? There you are. What's up, Tristan? Our, our my my fellow admin in the group, who you guys know and love. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm Nick Baldwin. In case you didn't know. Hey, Nick. And this is Jonathan Kirk. And Jonathan is with Keller Williams Legacy Metropolitan in Baltimore City. He's 30 years old, uh, and he's been in the business for five years. And today we're going to talk to Jonathan about how he has been mastering the art of uh, discussing third-party data when he's making expired calls, uh, discussing third-party data on the phone with potential sellers and in person uh, once he's in front of them at the listing appointment. Um, so Jonathan's on track to sell about 50 homes this year. Uh, right now he's got seven houses under contract. He's got 17 listings. He has nine listings coming soon this fall. So he's on a roll. Um, so we just want to talk to him a little bit. Jonathan, hey, Jonathan how, much say business, hi. how much of your business is expired? Wait, hold on, Jonathan. I'm gonna, everyone wants to clap for you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Okay, um, Tristan, go ahead. Sorry. How much is your of your business is expired? Um, I'd say right now about seventy five to eighty percent of our business is coming from expires. Oh my gosh, you're crushing it, dude! Like Gary V says, right? Yeah, man. Nice. <laughs> All right, so you've been in the business for five years only. Yep. And you're doing this much business already. What what propelled you to this level? Well, I'll be honest with you guys. I um. I, I lost a half million dollar listing and I felt the pain of losing that listing earlier this year before Keller Williams family reunion mm -hmm. and um, I didn't even have a listing presentation at that point so I kind of went in blindly and um, yeah because I had a buyer consult but no listing consult and I thought that I'd be able to talk my way through it uh, felt the pain of not getting that listing so um, you know went down to a KW family reunion with one mission to bulletproof my listing presentation, gather some good third-party info, and that's what propelled me to start, you know, getting aggressive on the phone and start taking these listings. So, one question there: You have a listing presentation now. Where did you get it? Whose do you use? Did you copy it? What is it? I'll be honest with you guys. Ben Kinney invented a great wheel, so I model my listing presentation right off of his. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant. He really utilizes the third-party data correctly and efficiently so it's so good that I'm able to use that over the phone um, to help me set the appointments and then I'll explain to them in person when I meet them for the listing how the third party data is affected to, to, to sell their home. And what I think is really powerful about third party data is it's not just coming from us, right? Um, so it's, it's hard numbers. It's something that you really can't dispute or argue with. So in terms of it, objection handling, it's very powerful. Absolutely. So I just want to go over a few stats because I'm in New Jersey, um, and recently New Jersey Realtor put out an article um, about home buyers from 2014, and it said that 99% of home buyers actually viewed real estate agents as a very useful source of information. So when you're talking to FISBOs, I mean, if you want to throw that out at them, um, you know, I think it's going to be uh, pretty eye-opening, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely, because they think that they know how to sell the home themselves, or they think that if they're going to be able to put it on Zillow, then they're going to find their buyer. But little do they know that there's actually five different places that they have to know, know how to market online to effectively sell a home today. Um, and once you start dropping those statistics to a for-sale by owner, more than likely they're going to invite you over their house um, and you could start to build that relationship with them, and once they feel the pain of not selling, more than likely they'll be calling you back to list their home. Well, it's funny that you say that stats with for sale by owners because we analyzed what type of uh, personality puts their home up for sale as a for sale by owner, and we came up with either a driver or an analytical. You're not going to find uh, an amiable or, a, or an expressive list their home as a for sale by owner. So you, you got it right, it's stats. Right. Right. And, yeah. You know, those people, those, that, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jonathan. You no, know, those people. What you said, Tristan, is pretty spot on because um, mm -hmm. if they feel that they can do it, more than likely they're going to try. 
Um, but we all know that the for sale by owners, they're the most successful within the first two weeks. And that's mainly because people don't really know what they have. Um, so they're going to come out, they're going to take a look, it's fresh. And um, after the first two weeks, they're probably going to be looking for some other alternative um, marketing methods to get their household because they're, they're not going to like people continuing to walk through their property without getting any offers. So Jonathan, one of the powerful stats that you use is agent to agent communication um, to sell listings. So obviously, like I said, I'm in New Jersey. I'm getting these stats for the state of New Jersey. Um, so obviously they differ from state to state. Uh, but Jonathan and I, you know, are in a very similar market. He's in Baltimore. I'm in New Jersey. Um, but 88% of New Jersey buyers purchased their home last year using a real estate agent. So Jonathan, why don't you go off of that stat with what, what you say to, home, to, to expired listings um, in terms of agent-to-agent -agent communication to sell homes? Okay, so after I'm on the phone with them for a little bit, I built a little bit of rapport and they've given me some useful information of whether they didn't like their last agent or whether they didn't get good feedback from the amount of people that came through the house. You know, I'll drop a statistic right there and I'll let them know that, hey, you know, the average agent doesn't even pick up the phone to call buyer's agents to get feedback on what the buyers were saying while they were walking through your property. And I say, you know, it's really their, their job to be able to extract that sort of information so you can make the best decision possible or make any changes if that needs to be done. And then I'll kind of go into, you know, Mr. Seller, you know, according to the National Association of Realtors, you know, they say that there's a certain way that buyers found their home. In 2014, they said that around 42% of buyers found their home from agents marketing directly towards other agents. And I'll explain. I'll say what I mean by that, Mr. Seller, is an agent like myself will say to another agent, hey, you should go check out 123 Main Street. It's a great property. And I'll say, Mr. Seller, 42% of buyers found their home that way. I said, now, as agents, we all have access to the MLS, you know, but we're all busy. We're driving people around in our cars. We're going on listing appointments. So we really don't have the time to sit there and wait for your property to pop up on the MLS to maybe show our buyer that house. So it's of the utmost importance that you have an agent that knows how to market directly towards other agents to effectively get your home sold. And when we meet Mr. Seller, I'll go down the list of how I do that. And that's what I tell them. Wow, you really organized it, man. I love the script. Yeah, so good, right? Well, that's, ben, that's Ben Kinney, man. That's I want to sit my phone with you right now. Hold on. <laughs> hey, uh, um, a quick question. Um, so at what point in the conversation on the phone do you feel that it's the right time to throw that to throw those numbers out at them? Usually when they've expressed a little bit of um, dissatisfaction from the last listing, you know, with the last agent, I'll ask them, I'll say, so what did you guys really like the best about what your last agent did? And most of the time, they don't say anything. Um, usually you hear crickets. Um, so, so what I'll say to them, I'll say, guys, you know, <laughs> there you go with the crickets. <laughs> say, and so then I'll drop that quick that quick stat that you know, Mr. Seller, the average agent doesn't even pick up the phone to call your the buyers agents to find out what those buyers were saying. And once they hear that, they kind of know that they're talking to somebody that's a little bit different on the phone. And then I push a little bit further and I say, you know, Mr. Seller, in order to sell a home in this market, there's a certain way that buyers found their house. So we have to be able to market in the places where buyers are actually looking for their homes. First, we, we discuss, you know, agent-to-agent -agent marketing, which is about 41, 42 percent. And then I say the other large chunk, Mr. Seller, which you and I both know, is online marketing, which I say, what's the first thing you're going to do when you think about, you know, researching a product that you're going to buy? And then I'll pause. I'll make them answer. Um, I'll hop Can I just interrupt you for one second? I think that's so incredibly powerful because, Tristan, it's so true. If you're researching, like your computer died the other day. Yeah. The first thing you probably did was jumped on Google to see, you know, which computers had the had had the best reviews. Yeah. So that's such a powerful line. Yeah. So when I'm so when I drop that line and I'll say so with, with online that could, that that probably accounts for about forty eight fifty percent of where your buyer is going to come from, Mr. Seller, in two thousand fifteen. And I say in order to market properly online, in order to sell a house today online, there's five different areas that you have to know how to market in which I'm more than happy to explain to you when we meet later today. And then I'll just go in for the close. Um, but if I don't go in for the close right there, I'll give them that last little snippet that, you know, and the remaining 14 to 15% of 
of where your buyer is going to come from is usually from my sign in the yard, open houses, or just general people speaking word of mouth. Um, you know so what's then, that I love, Jonathan, speaking of open houses? In a good market, in a good market, only 1% of homes sell um, from doing an open house. Only 1%. Right. And, and then, good so, so therefore, if they're thinking about listing with a big company that's got a lot of market presence in their area, um, if though you can you can basically say this, you could say so if your last real estate agent didn't know how to market effectively to other agents, and if they didn't know how to market effectively online, Mr. Seller, you were really leaving yourself a ten to fifteen percent chance to get your home sold. Nice. So, Jonathan, once once they open the door and say, "Okay, fine, come and meet me," uh, and you meet them in person, how do you close them once you're there? What's your secret weapon? Because that you've been doing this with expires and you're successful, man. Tell Absolutely. Yeah, Tristan. I um, I'll be honest with you guys. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Is what they say. Um, you know, the model's already been created. And you know, I was in Ben Kinney's class in Florida for um family reunion last year, and I was even in his class three years ago for the same class. But I wasn't ready to receive the information at that point three years ago. My special weapon is really the trial closes that he has us that he does in his um, presentations. So after I explain to them how I market directly towards other agents and how I market effectively, I'll ask them if there is anything that another agent has said that they would do in regard to marketing directly towards other agents that for some reason I just forgot to mention. And normally they're like, "No, Jonathan, that's pretty much you know, you know, the most effective." Um, way to do it that I've heard. And I'll say, yeah, that's normally what I hear is that this is the most effective way to market towards other agents, um, directly towards other agents, but that only accounts for about 42% of where your buyer is going to come from, Mr. Seller. Let's move on to the big chunk, which is online marketing. And then I'll show them how I market online. I'll go through all that, and then I'll trial close them again, guys. I'll say, so is there, as I go through this, guys, I say, as I add this up, is there anything that any of the other agents that you met with or worked with has said that they would do in regard to marketing your property directly online that for some reason I just didn't cover here? And they're like mind blown. Like their eyes are wide open. Like they're like, no, Jonathan. So then I'll go in for the close. I'll say, so is there anything other than price that you guys wanted to discuss before we fill out some paperwork? And usually if they have an objection, that's when you're going to hear that objection. So you can isolate it and overcome it and get the listing and um, get it sold. So uh, I know that you say something very strategic on the phone, um, you know, about getting in to see the house uh, before you hang up the phone with them. It's very strategic. It's kind of like reverse psychology. Do you know what I'm referring to? Yeah, yeah, you know, when they're when they're like, "All right, Jonathan, you know, you, you can come you can come take a look at the house, you know, but I'm not signing anything. I'm not signing any paperwork with you." And I'll say, "All right, Mr. Nick, you know, that's completely understandable. In the same respect, you know, I can't commit to listing with you yet either." I say, "The truth is is that I'm I'm really super selective about the houses that I sell in this market. So believe me when I tell you, Mr. Seller, I'm certainly not going to pursue you as a seller if I don't think I can get you the number that you're looking for." It's only going to take us about five or ten minutes to decide whether or not I want to take one and sell your property, and if you want an aggressive team like the Kirk Home Group to listen and sell it for you. Dude, I love six that. or seven work better. So tell me, where did where did you uh, combine your scripts from, or where did you where are you getting your scripts from? Okay, so that line I got from Derek Lipsky about a year and a half. Oh, ago. I yeah, Derek Lipsky is very good. He's got some great lines. Dave Norberg is another good one. And I combined my scripts with those two guys, and then once I got a hold of Ben Kinney, um, once I added him into the equation, I mean, there was just no looking back. I, I figured out, like, the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe to setting appointments and to closing appointments. I'm going to call you the Colonel, okay? It's the Colonel's okay. secret oh, recipe. Damn. Colonel. <laughs> Jonathan the Colonel Kirk. I yes, like sir. it. He's got or a the captain. You can call me the captain. Captain Kirk is usually Captain there. Crunch. Oh, Captain Kirk. Okay. <laughs> right. Cool man. Uh, I like it. So, how are you using the third-party data here when you're when you're at the table or before? So, so the third-party data is is basically the presentation. All it is, it's a pie chart of where buyers come from. And um, you know, once I explain to them that the National Association of Realtors, they say that there's a certain way that buyers found their house. I'll show them the pie chart. And I'll say, guys, you know, I, I tweak my marketing dollars every year to make sure that I'm spending money 
where buyers are actually, you know, finding their homes, not where you as a seller is going to be happy, you know, seeing your house on TV or what's going to boost my ego, seeing my big face on a billboard, which I wouldn't hate. Um, but I say that I'm going to spend money where the buyers are actually finding their homes, which is the consumer sites, the search portals, and stuff like that. Um, and usually, you know, after I've trial closed them on how I market agent to agent and online, um, and I say, is there anything other than price that you wanted to discuss before we fill out some paperwork? Usually there's um, there's no objection. If there is an objection, it's just one objection handler that can basically cover you know all the objections. And if you want, I can go through that with you guys. Well, I feel like you you kind of uh, you kind of are able to get past a lot of the objections by incorporating the agent to agent aspect because I feel like a I feel like there's a good amount of agents that don't use that tactic in their listing presentation it's all about what they're going to do in terms of photos and video and where the where the property is going to be seen and so on and so forth but a lot of them forget that nine times out of ten another agent is going to sell that house and that I feel using that tactic is going to just instantly allow you to overcome uh, a lot of objections the sellers going to have for you yeah, that's true. And Tristan, going back to what you were saying, how I how I open up to start giving them the third party information, um, you know, once they've expressed their uh, dissatisfaction with the previous agent, I'll let them know what most agents do. And you know, I'm with Keller Williams, and I've been given great scripts. I've taken bold four times, so those are in, in ingrained in my mind. I'll say, you know, Mr. Seller, I totally understand your frustration. Um, with the last agent, I'll say, you know, most agents do what I like to call the three P's of real estate. You know, they place a sign in your yard, they place it on the multiple list, and then they pray somebody else will sell it for them. I say, we do a lot more work than that. We do the fourth and fifth P, which is the prospect every single day to try and find buyers for our sellers. I say, which is coincidentally why we're on the phone right now, so you know I'm not making that up. And fifth is the price watch. And then I'll say, you know, Mr. Seller, there, there's a certain way that buyers found their homes. And then I drop third party. According to the National Association of Realtors, that's my credibility. And then I go into, they say that there's a certain way that buyers found their homes, 40-some percent from agent to agent. Then I go over online marketing, and then the other 12 percent, which is you know open houses, sign in the yard, word of mouth. And um, Jonathan, yeah, how often do you practice your scripts, or how long did you practice before you became this good? Because I was, do that. I was practicing every day. I had script partners uh, five days a week in all different parts of the country. Um, from all the pages that we're a part of, um, I network with a lot of top producing agents, and I use them until I felt comfortable. Because I'll be honest with you guys, and I'm sure a lot of people that are going to watch this can relate. When I first got on the phone, you know, I was real nervous, and I still get a little bit nervous sometimes. But you know, my my adrenaline was physically pumping. I mean, my heart was pounding. I could almost not catch my breath when I would get somebody on the phone because wow. I'd be so jacked and excited until I learned my scripts and I was really comfortable with what I was going to say. And now, I'll be honest, I, I basically say the same thing over and over again. Um, it gets kind of redundant um, to, to my other agents in here. They, they know it verbatim now because they've heard me say it so many times. So how do you get over that first objection when you're calling and they're saying, oh, you know what, you're the, you're the 13th caller, or you know what, I just don't want to sell, I'm sorry. Well, if I'm the 13th caller, I'll be like, all right, well, what do I win? Or, I, or, I, or like Brian Gass said the other day. Number 13. Right. Or Brian Gass, he said a great comment. He was like, you know, I know a real surefire way to make those calls stop. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would just go into That's let them know yeah. how I'm different from most other agents out there. Yeah, that was good, man. That was a good one. I like the resistance. If, if you're getting resistance from the people on the phone, that means you got a good person on the other line that you probably would be able to connect with if you could ask the right questions and extract the right information yeah. to ignite certain feelings inside them to make you feel like you're actually a lot different than the average agent that's been blowing their phone up. Well, here's the thing with expireds. I mean, they're not in a good mood. Can you blame them? Their house is on the market for six months and nobody bought it. <laughs> I mean, I would be in a bad mood too. So, you know, you just have to kind of use the emotions and kind of turn it, you know, listen to them, you know, repeat to them what they are saying so they know that you're listening and then sympathize with them. And it's, it's I feel it's, it can be really effective. Jonathan, you've, got, you've got 17 expires are around there right now, right? The listings mm -hmm. that are mostly all expired. Uh, how long does it take you to get an appointment? Is it on the first call? Is it? Eighth call. What are, what are you found? What's, what's good? I'm not calling. I'll be honest, guys. I'm not calling for hours. Um, you know, 
when I first started, I had nobody else but myself, so I had to be as effective as possible in a short amount of time as possible. Right. Um, so I'm not about calling for hours upon hours. I can call for 45 minutes, an hour and a half, and set three or four appointments, five, six nurtures, and I'm a happy camper. Um, as long as I get people on the phone, they're going to get set as long as they yeah. have a motivation to buy. Sure. Sure. motivation to sell. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, okay, that's, that's really important because I know a lot of agents are, you know, calling for five, six, seven hours a day. I mean, personally, I, I don't think I could ever do that because I have other business to attend to, but... Yeah, I mean, look, if you call for 45 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, and, you know, you've set three or four appointments and the numbers are really good, um, you know, I think that's that's a great, um, you know, a great role to be on, don't you think? Absolutely, and if you can blast that with a power dialer, you're going to get a lot more done than you would if you were going to manually dial. What power dialer do you need? Tristan, I know that you, you, you don't spend that much time calling every day, right? Like, and you, you, you guys are on like a, what, how many appointments do you set in a day, you think, with your phone calls? I don't know. Uh, we set a lot What's of buyers. You personally, we work a lot on our database. That's a thing. Um, yeah, we're calling probably about two hours in the morning. We do scripts and then we call. Okay. And after that, we just go and do our appointments. So. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Hey, Chris, and I um to answer your question, I use the Land Voice Power Dialer. Okay, cool. Uh, how, how do you like it? I love it, man. I love it. It's really good. I got some good service over there. Jake Bobo and uh, um, Chad Bobo and Jake Morris are really great, and um, you know they, they take care of me whenever I need some some issues resolved, which happens. I'm actually using uh, the Land Voice Data, and I have a Vulcan dialer. So. Why do you like the Vulcan dialer, Nick? Um, I like it. There's a it's there's a lot of information that pops up on the screen. Um, I'm the type of person that. You know, I know Tristan, you are too. That you need to have a lot of information in front of you when you're calling somebody. Um, and I'm that type of person too. I'm very visual, so I need to have some. I need to have a lot of information in front of me on the screen. I feel that the Vulcan dialer uh, really gives that to me. I'm gonna make a comment regarding that because I saw a post on our page a little while ago regarding that. Um, I, when I first jumped on the dialer, guys, I was a little nervous because I didn't have the information up in front of me, you know, first. But I do have my MLS on my left screen, and I have my dialer on my right screen. So as soon as I catch somebody, you know, I'll click that Zillow or that Trulia uh, link so I can actually see the property, see what it looks like. And then right. if I feel like they're a possible prospect, while I'm on the phone with them, I'll start pulling it up on the MLS so I can make sure that I have the most accurate information and to use their previous listing against them to help me set the appointment. Boom. Yeah. Jonathan, hey, I just want to uh, – Tristan, do you have any final questions? I just had one final question. but you know, um, Are you in coaching, any type of coaching, Jonathan? Uh, not currently. I'm actually exploring getting into uh, MAPS coaching. I have a lot of mentors in the business, obviously through you guys and the connections that I've had. Um, got a baby coming any day right now. So wow. that's been put on a back burner for another <laughs> – Thank you. So what's your last question, Nick? I was going to say, you know, you mentioned before that a lot of agents, um, you know, their their biggest um, reason for not dialing or not calling is definitely uh, being afraid. You know, and I admit that I was afraid. Um, last year I went to Mega Camp, and that was kind of a turning point for me in my career, um, and it really got me fired up. I can't wait to go next month because it's going to be fired up again. But what would you say to, um, you know, an agent that is just really afraid of the phone, you know? What would you say to that person to get them to pick up the phone and just start, start making those calls? I would say what Gary says to all of us, Gary Keller, uh, the founder of Keller Williams. He says that imperfect action is always better than a perfect plan. So just get on the phones, let it get messy, create problems for yourself, and just dive right in. Roll up your sleeves and get dirty. Because otherwise, all those plans, it's never going to happen. You just got to do it. Love it. You know, that's awesome. I'm, I always think that, like, <laughs> the worst thing I'm going to hear is the word no. The worst thing I'm going to hear is a dial tone. And maybe I'll hear a couple F words. But you know what? Who cares? <laughs> like, they're the ones that look like, uh, you know, they're the ones that look bad, not me. I'm just trying to help them out. Look, we got it. We got it better than a lot of other people in this world. If we got to just make calls from a comfortable air-conditioned office on a hot day, I don't think our problems are really that bad. No, they're we not got, bad. Man. We got it pretty good, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>
Tristan, um, you know, look, I know that you're in, I know that you're in California, but I'm gonna go scuba diving today because it's a really nice day hey. in Jersey. I think it's like. <laughs> Oh, wait. Whoa, what's happening? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Hey, listen, it's been fun. Uh, it's been fun. I, I had a, I think it was a great conversation. It was a good one, Jonathan. That was good. Good info, bro. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you both. All right, guys. All right, man. Go make some calls. All right, boys. Talk to you later. Take care.